the President of the United States! Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Lincoln is the inventor of the proposition nation. The longer the war went on, the more he's got a cosmic mission to enforce the Declaration of Independence, which he thinks is part of the Constitution. This ever since has been an idea you can't shake. We, we're supposed to have a world mission and the New Englanders were better at it or pioneered it. This mission to transform the world and make everybody live like we do. And this serves anybody in power who wants to have an ambitious foreign policy. When it comes to foreign policy, Jefferson's vision was no entangling alliances. And you saw this all throughout the early 19th century up until we get to the Republican control in the 1860s and we have a shift into a much more imperial position. So uh, we would have had a, a foreign policy that was much more reserved. You might say America first, but it was non-intervention. And the Jeffersonians, this Virginia position, wasn't uh, aggressive abroad. That would come more out of Massachusetts as we move forward. And this puritanical zeal to remake the world like New England. Uh, when you think about a crisis in 1861, Lincoln comes into office and he makes his inaugural address and he basically says, well, we're going to enforce the laws. There was a secession crisis, of course, at that point. You had the Deep South out of the Union and Lincoln took a very militant stance. Jefferson assumed office in 1801 with a secession crisis potentially on the horizon. You had New England Federalists who didn't want him as president. They were openly talking about seceding. And Jefferson's response was, well, let them say what they want. He never said that he was going to punish these people. Of course, he made the very famous uh, statement, uh, we're all Federalists, we're all Republicans. And it was a unifying message, something that was conciliatory. It was uh, empathetic in some ways. Publicly, he was always interested in, in a reconciliationist position. We have a union, but we do have a federal republic, and Massachusetts can be Massachusetts, and Virginia can be Virginian. He wrote to John Adams in 1813 about that very same thing. We have two different societies here, and it's the nature of the Constitution that's always allowed those things to exist because we don't try to control you and you don't try to control us. And that's what his grave concern was in 1820. So if you look at Virginia leading, I think you would have had a much more dedicated central government when it comes to these states being able to govern their own affairs the way that they see fit on issues that are domestic in nature. Lincoln's view was that the claim of equality was put in the Declaration so that it would change America in the future. If you look at narratives and historiography, many of the stories we tell are reflections of the need of a time. And he had a need to fight a war. And it was his words that led to a world where everything is being dissolved. 